All right, I want to welcome everybody to day two of the opening training. Once again, I want to acknowledge that the process may seem to be a little bit overwhelming. I get that. We're going to try to make it as easy as possible. But that said, it can only become easy if you pay attention, take notes, and do what it is we ask you to do. of centers who pretty much built the machine and got it down to a science. These training programs were certainly not easy to create and took a tremendous amount of time to create. They're broken down into sections and cover everything about the campaign, explaining the reasons why we do certain things. Then we go into depth about the script, why it was written the way it was, why we're saying certain things, the meaning behind it, and how the script should be delivered. Now, the difference between success and failure is the agents or the centers that end up failing, the same centers that did not pay attention in these meetings, did not partake in these meetings, and did not follow our direction. <clears throat> We're going to provide you all of the information and provide you all the tools for you to be successful. So when it all comes down to it, you guys are in control of your own destiny. You control what it is, what role you play in this game. Everybody starts out as an open agent. We're giving you the opportunity to earn while you're learning. Say that again. We're giving you the opportunity to earn while you learn. Now, your role or your goal is not to send as many transfers as possible. Your goal is to send interested, cooperative, people that meet the three basic requirements. That is that they are indeed the homeowner, not a renter, that they do live in a single family residence, not a townhouse, condo, mobile home, manufactured home, tank, lean to, or cave. <laughs> it must be a single family residence. And third, they must have an average utility bill over a hundred dollars. They meet all five of those requirements will then transfer the call. Not four out of five, not three out of five, not two out of five, not one out of five. They must meet all five criteria to be transferred. Now, as I said, your goal is to be promoted to a closer in training and then a closer after that. Those are the three levels. You control your own destiny. You control what role you want to. So we'll talk about that in detail later on. Now you'll hear me talk about this over and over again. Many of you come from a customer service background. Now that's good and that's bad. Positive is that you're used to talking to people. The negative is that you're looking to please those same people. Now there's a major difference between sales and customer service. With sales or with customer service, you're trying to please the customer. That's your goal, to please the customer. Now with sales, you're trying to please yourself. You don't care what the customer thinks. You don't care what the customer wants. All you care about is what you want. As an opening agent, you want to transfer a customer that is interested, cooperative, and meets all three qualifications. As a closer in training and as a closer, you want to set the appointment. 
and you need to do everything in your power to make that happen. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is you have to learn to stand these people up in order to get what you want. Now, I don't care what you're selling, what service or product you're offering. I don't care if it's an everyday conversation that you have with your friends, your relatives, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. I don't care what conversation you have in life. Someone is always trying to sell something to someone else. Now, it may be a product. It may be a service that you're providing. It may be just an idea or your point of view. You could be talking to your friends about sports and who's the best player or who's your favorite team. You could be talking about movies or entertainment. Who's your favorite band? Who's your favorite singer? Who's your favorite actor? It doesn't matter. You're trying to get them to understand and agree with you on your point, right? You're trying to sell them an idea. You're trying to sell them your way of thinking. In every conversation, someone is selling someone to somebody. Now, in every conversation, there may be two points of view. You're trying to sell them. They're trying to sell you on their point of view. That's kind of like a, it's like going to court, right? You have your attorney representing you, and the other guy or the government has their attorney representing them. And you're basically arguing your points of view in front of the judge and the jury. This is the same thing. Telemarketing is the same. Now, in every conversation, as I said, someone sells someone or something, somebody. So either you're controlling the conversation or they're controlling the conversation, but you can't have both. So you've got to figure out a way to control the conversation. Otherwise, you're going to lose. And you're going to give in to what they want, what they're trying to sell you. So either you're selling them and you're controlling the conversation, or they're selling you and they're controlling the conversation. That's what all, telemarketing all comes down. So in order to control the conversation, you need to know two things. You need to know the script and you need to be able to present the script the way we want you to do it and number two you need to know your rebuttals and present those rebuttals the way we want you to so the purpose of this meeting is to introduce you to this campaign number one show you the dialer the script how it's presented and then we're going to use this as a baseline to be able to move forward with regards to selling solar, we are not selling solar. We are selling the idea of solar. What we are doing is providing our clients the opportunity to meet someone face to face and discuss the pros and cons of solar and have them sell. We're just providing the initial information to pique their interest enough to have them want to meet with our clients so the clients can provide them with a proposal. So let's talk about the script here for a second. The opening script. So the first thing you're going to do every day before you log in, you're going to read this to yourself. It's the rules to succeed. Basically, you're trying to talk yourself into it. It's an affirmation. Telemarketing is one of the hardest things in the world to do and do successfully. Why? Because out of 100 people, 99 of them are going to reject you. So you got to deal with rejection. That's number one. Number two, everybody the world over hates telemarketers. I do. You do. 
and so do the people that we're calling. Doesn't matter what you sell, what you're giving away, what you're offering, doesn't matter. You cannot be bottled. Give you an example. Say you're home on a weekend, you're doing something, you're watching TV, watching your favorite movie, you're watching your favorite sporting event, basketball, whatever. Phone rings, you answer it, all of a sudden, you find that it's telemarketing. Immediately, your brain starts working overtime to figure out what you're going to do to get him off this call. Now, there's really two types of people that answer the call. Number one, those people that are up front. I'm not interested. Well, hang up on you. That's good. One less person you have to deal with. The other person just hangs up. Doesn't say a word. That's good. One less person you have to deal with. You're one step closer to where the person you need to find. Okay. Then you got everybody else. And what they're doing is racking their brain to say something intelligent while being nice and polite to get you off the phone. Most people will tell you that they're busy. Call me back. As I mentioned earlier, in every conversation you have in life, someone is selling something to somebody. Maybe a product or service, maybe an idea or a point of view. You're calling them, they respond, call me back, I'm busy. You have two choices, to buy what they're selling Okay, I'll call you back. Or to fight and get past that hurdle to get what you want. Let's think about callbacks as rational. First of all, opening agents are not allowed callbacks. <laughs> They're a waste of time. I'll say that again. Opening agents are not allowed callbacks. Number two, let's think about this rationally. If they were so busy, why did they take the time to answer your call? They only became busy when they found out it was you calling about telemarketing. Because again, if they were so busy, they wouldn't have taken the call. So. You're going to have a long day ahead of you. You got to psych yourself out. It's almost like you're going to war. Or think of it as you're going to play a sporting event. And what do we do before we, we start to play sports? We warm up. We get a little sweat going. We stretch. Same thing. This is your pregame warm up. You're psyching yourself out for what's about to come. So, I am the professional. I have the advantage because I have a game plan and the tools or the bait to succeed, a reference to fishing that I used in the pre-training material. I'm gonna follow the script and deliver it in a conversational manner and not sound like a used car salesman. Again, another reference. The customer is just a fish. I know more than they do. I remain in control, stay focused, confident, and energetic. They're going to agree with me. In every conversation, someone is selling something to someone. Either I'm selling them or they're going to be selling me. I want to be the one selling them. The goal is to capture their attention 15 seconds at a time, not to get finished with the script. We're creating bite-sized pieces that they can swallow. A reference to how do you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. All right? The goal is not to sell them solar. The goal is to sell them the idea of solar and get the appointment. It's not what we say or ask. It's how we do it that matters. So every day, you need to read this before you even log in. You need to psych yourself up. Convince yourself. Because if you're not convinced, there's no way you can convince the people that you're talking to. The next thing I put in there is a timeline. This is what is expected. 20 to 25 seconds. You should be beginning question number one, which is here. So in other words, you need to get from here to here, down to here, within 20 to 25 seconds. 
between 30 and 45 seconds. You should be asking your third question, which is, how much is your utility bill if you took a 12 month average knowing in the summertime it may be higher than the winter? And you need to be finished with the script somewhere between 90, 60 and 90 seconds. Anybody have any questions so far? I have a question. Sure. The question is that, what if my script is finished in 20 seconds? So, right here, you'll notice that it's all color coordinated. What in yellow is not part of the script. It's my instructions to you. So in other words, what we're doing is calling people in your area that are interested in lowering their electric bill by as much as 60%. Pause, let your words breathe. No, you don't say that. <laughs> You'll notice that it's all color coordinated. What in yellow is not part of the script. It's my instructions to you. So in other words, what we're doing is calling people in your area that are interested in lowering their electric bill by as much as 60%. Pause, let your words breathe. No, you don't say that. <laughs> Those are my instructions to you. Wait, in a light green. These are called tie downs, also called trial closes. They are part of the script and must be said. Dark green means speed through it. All right. Hi, my name is David and I'm calling from Sunlight Solar. Great, now it's called being recorded for training compliance purposes. You want to speak as fast as you can and then slow it down. Wait, in purple, these are built in robots. Now, many of you are going to try and make up your own script. You're going to go off the reservation and think that you have better ideas than I do. You, if you do that, you are going to fail. Now, true story. At one time in my life, I was where you were, working for somebody else. And every sales job I've ever had, the first thing I would do is look at the script. Every time, I'd end up rewriting my own. Why? Because the script sucked. It could have been improved on a lot. That is not the case here. Let me explain why. I started doing solar by myself and figuring out what worked where and when. I started out with the concept of a script and worked on it and worked on it and worked on it with real live calls for about six months until I perfected it. Now, some of it is laid out for legal reasons. Some of it is laid out for psychological reasons, and some of it is laid out for salesmanship reasons, and some of it was laid out as a result of what I did by taking these calls by myself. In other words, I figured out where people are going to ask their questions or interrupt you with a question, comment, or a concern. <laughs> now, when someone addresses you with a question, comment, or a concern, you must address their question, comment, and concern, and then go back to where you left off in the script. Now, that's only if you get all three questions answered. Do they own the home or do they rent it? Do they live in a single family residence, townhouse, condo, mobile home, manufactured home, etc.? And is their utility bill over $100 if it, they took a 12-month average? Because without knowing that, 
why would you answer their questions? Yes, it's the polite thing to do. Yes, it's probably how you were raised. Someone asks a question, you answer it. But unless you know that they are pre-qualified, they are not worthy or worth speaking to. They may ask, what's your name? They may ask, what's the name of the company? They may ask, how did you get my phone number? They may ask, how did you, where are you calling from? They may ask, how much is this going to cost me? And none of those questions matter unless you know that they are pre-qualified because what's the purpose of answering their questions if you come to find out that they don't qualify how much is this going to cost me well you can answer their question go back into the pitch and then find out that they're a renter or they don't live in a single family residence or their electric bill is under a hundred dollars and then you come to find out you just wasted all your time Answering a question to somebody who you cannot help. So as a general rule, yes, you must address their question, comment, or a concern, and then go back to where you left off in the script. However, at the very beginning of the script, whether it's opening or closing, you don't answer their, you ignore their questions until you know that they're worth speaking to and answering their questions. So we're going to go back and talk about the basics. Pretty easy, fundamental thing to understand. But yet, agent after agent works so hard to screw that up because they have what's called better ideas disease. I promise you, you will be that much more successful and it'll be an easier thing to do and you'll get past the learning curve very quickly if you just follow directions as we laid them out. Now, you have to remain in control knowing that in every conversation someone is selling something. So if I'm trying to sell them and they're trying to sell me as to why not, and I buy into it, then I bought what they were selling. That doesn't do me any good. Because if I don't get what I want, in your case, setting, getting the call transferred and then ultimately getting the appointment, then you ultimately fail because you didn't get what you want. So two things you got to understand. Number one, follow the script as it was written. Number two, you have to have the script in your hand. You have to have a hard copy of the script. You cannot read the script from a computer screen. If you do, you're going to fail. Now, I know many of you are saying, Oh my God, this guy's off his rocker. He's just crazy. What do you mean I have to have a hard copy? Sure, it's easy enough. I can just read it from a computer screen. No, you can't. Why? Because someone is going to interrupt you with a question, comment, or a concern. When they do that, you have to address their question, comment, or concern, and then go back exactly to where you left off. Now, if you don't know where you left off in the script you're probably going to miss something in the script in which case everything that you say afterwards is going to be disjointed and not have the same meaning you're going to sound uneducated and you're going to sound unprofessional and if you do people will not buy what you're trying to sell 
Number two, nobody wants to hear you mumble and fumble on the phone. Nobody wants to hear awkward silence because you're trying to find your place. Nobody wants to hear, hang on a second, let me just look. Uh, where did I leave off? Here, I got it. Nobody wants to hear you look for rebuttal. You're not going to sound professional. They're going to hang up. Not because they weren't interested in the idea of solo. They just weren't interested in talking to you. So if you have the script in your hand and you're following it with your fingers, you know exactly where you left off. So you can address their question, comment, and concern, and then go right back to where your fingers were in the script. You know where you left off without missing a beat. So how should this script be presented? The first thing is you got to understand they can't see you. All they can go on is your voice. They can't see your facial expressions. All they can go on is reflections in your voice. Now, if you think about it, this is a lot like acting. If you had an open cattle call to a movie and 500 actors or actresses lined up for the same part, they're all going up for the same role in the movie. Why does one actor or actress get the part and the other 499 don't? How they deliver their lines. You're all using the same lines. So it's how you present those lines that make the difference. Now remember, they can't see your facial expression. All they can go on is your voice. So what can we do with our voice to make it stand out? We can change the pace in which we're speaking. We can speak faster. We can speak slower. We can pause for effect. We can raise and lower the volume of our voice. We can raise and lower the pitch of our voice. We can talk lower. And we can talk higher. You want to make certain words stand out and have them concentrate on certain words. I'm going to present the pitch three different ways. After each one, I'm going to want you to comment on it. All right. So I'm going to do this super fast to illustrate how some of the agents actually sound. Now, they're going fast because they're worried about the 90 seconds. But I want you to think about this for a second because it's going to have the exact opposite effect. Because as they're trying to rush through the script, the customer or the person they're speaking with can't understand a word they say. Yes, their ears hear it, but their brain can't catch up to what their ears are saying and understand what their ears just heard. So let's try this. Hi, my name is David. I'm calling from Sunlight Solar. What we're doing is calling people in your area interested in lowering their electric bill by as much as 6% by possibly switching to solar. Let's face it, each year, electric bills increase by an average of 16% or more, depending on your location. Also, your electric bill varies month to month, which can sometimes make it hard to manage a budget. What if we can show you how the uh, different electric bills, you can save you money and your payment will remain the same each month? Would you be interested in finding out more? So my job is not to sell you anything, but rather educate you on possibly switching solar to see if you qualify. If you do, we're then going to create a professional, no cost, no obligation proposal for you. It's going to show you exactly how much you can save or even earn by going solar. Does that sound fair? All right. Your ears heard it, but your brain couldn't comprehend anything that your ears heard. So invariably, what someone is going to do is, whoa, 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 dude, slow down. And now you're going to have to waste more time repeating yourself 
at a slower pace. So don't do that. Again, I just talked about they can't see you. All they can go on is your voice and the inflections in your voice, your volume, your tone, your pitch, etc. Now I'm going to use the same exact words, but now I'm going to do it in super slow motion. Because this is actually how some of you agents actually sound. Hi, my name is David. I'm calling from Sunlight Solar. What we're doing is calling people that are interested in lowering their electric bill by as much as 60% by possibly switching to solar. Let's face it, each year electric bills increase by an average of 16% or more depending on your location. Also, your electric bill varies month to month, which can sometimes make it hard to manage a budget. What if we can show you a different approach where you can save money and your payment will remain the same each month? Would you be interested in finding out more? So my job is not to sell you anything, but rather to educate you on possibly switching to solar to see if you qualify. If you do, we will then create a professional, no cost, no obligation proposal for you. It will show you exactly how much you can save or even earn by going solar. Does that sound fair? Now, I just use the exact same words. But I did it so slow and so monotone, I bored the listener to death. The listener tuned out after the third word I said. Because it wasn't exciting. Yes, their ears heard it. But their brain shut off after the third word, and nothing that was said actually registered in the brain. You guys can't recite what I said. You heard it. So again, we got to make it a little bit exciting. We got to capture the listener's attention. How do we do that? Altering our voice. Again, you are acting. Think of it as telling a long joke. We've all told jokes in our life, right? You got the setup and the punchline. How do you keep someone engaged? You have to say something exciting. Well, you're all using the same words. Speed up, slow down. Raise, lower your voice. Raise, lower your pitch. Pause. Make those words stand out and dance. We want to make them concentrate on certain words and certain subjects. So again, follow the color coordinates. They're like stop signs. They're like street signs, right? Green, speed up. Hi, my name is David. I'm calling from Sunlight Solar. Slow it down. What we're doing is calling people that are interested in lowering their electric bill by as much as 60% by possibly switching to solar. Let's face it, each year, electric bills increase by an average of 16% or more, depending on your location. Also, your electric bill varies month to month, which can sometimes make it hard to manage a budget. What if we can show you a different approach where you can save money 
and your payment will remain the same each month. Would you be interested in finding out more? So my job is not to sell you anything, but rather to educate you on possibly switching to solar and see if you qualify. If you do, we're then going to create a professional, no cost, no obligation proposal for you. It's going to show you exactly how much you can save or even earn by going solar. Does that sound fair? Again, we use the exact same words. But each example had a different meaning and a different result. Again, this is just to demonstrate, to make it sink in that this are these are the possible outcomes for you. You can go too fast, too slow, or do it just right. If you do it just right and you make your words stand out and dance, you're going to capture the listener's attention. Now, remember, everybody hates telemarketers, so you got to get past that Huh. You got to get over that hurdle and keep them engaged. Keep them, ex make them want to listen for more. Because otherwise they're just going to hang up on you. I know the script looks complicated and I know it looks really long. However, if you took out all of the instructions, all of the rebuttals, this is what it looks like. That's it. It's actually 17 sentences long. That's it. Very simple. But it all comes down to it. Now, what makes the what makes it work is the instructions, the built-in rebuttals, because there is no such thing as a perfect pitch. You're going to have obstacles. That's it. So, what are we saying? We're saying we need to get from here to here in between 20 and 25 seconds. Right. We're saying that we need to get here within 30 and 45 seconds. And then we need to get here in 60 to 90 seconds. Now, you heard me do it, and I slowed it down to illustrate my point. But I got through this in about 70 seconds. Now, the only reason you're not going to get your time right is because A, you're not following the script correctly. B, you're not pronouncing your words or you're speaking too fast or too slow and you're having to repeat yourself, wasting valuable time. You're wasting too much time with chit chat. Notice it did not say, hi, how are you? Now, do you know why in the script it does not say, hi, how are you? My name is. No, I don't know. Because uh, telemarketing is one of the hardest things to do. A, because you're dealing with constant rejection. But B, it's one of the most unnatural things to do because it goes against every principle you were raised with. You were raised to be nice and polite. Well, being polite, you start out having a conversation. Hi, how are you? 
How's your day? Jerry? If I asked you how your day is, how are you? You're going to tell me you're good or you're bad, right? And then you're going to tell me maybe why you're having a good day, why you're having a bad day, right? And then you're going to follow it up with maybe how are you? And then that person's going to have to say why, whether they're having a good day or a bad day and why. All that is wasting is taking up valuable time. So number one, it's wasting valuable time. Number two, you're never going to see me again. You're never going to talk to me again. It's a once in a lifetime thing. One conversation, never going to have another conversation with this person again. Let me ask, do you care how that person is doing? Do you think they care how you're doing? So we're wasting valuable time and it's unnecessary because nobody cares. So if it's not in the script, don't say it. That is not in the script. Hi, how are you? Everybody clear on that? Perfect. And while we're on the subject, notice it does not say, can you hear me? Just assume they can. You're just wasting valuable time. If they cannot hear you, they will tell you they can't hear you. Therefore, don't ask it. Just assume that they can. So don't start out with, hi, how are you? Or can you hear me? Both wasting time and goes against the purpose of what we're trying to do. Perfect. If we're not asking how we're doing, we're not wasting valuable time on chit chat. So we're just going to get right to it. So the toughest part about any telemarketing call is the opening because we have to get past that initial hurdle. That initial hurdle is they want to hang up on you. They hate telemarketers. So we want to build quick momentum very quickly, right? You want to explain who you are, what you're doing, and why you're calling very quickly. Otherwise, the person that you're speaking to has no earthly idea why they're wasting time speaking to you, right? So we're building momentum. So if you're not wasting time with chit chat, the only other thing that would take up time besides someone asking you a question is because you have to repeat yourself because they didn't understand what you said, either because you mispronounced the words or you spoke too fast or too slow. Now you'll notice in purple, there is a built in rebuttal. Now your job is opening agents is to find that interested cooperative person who meets all three requirements. Your job is to control the conversation. I told you that telemarketing is the most unnatural thing in the world to do because it goes against everything you were brought up with. You grew up wanting to be polite to others, to care about what other people think to care about how they feel about you, to care about what they want. There's two types of telemarketing. There's telemarketing where you're customer service and there's telemarketing with sales. I mentioned earlier that many of you come from a customer service background. I need you all to take your customer service hat and take it off 
because everything you learn to do with customer service goes out the window because you don't care what they want. You don't care what they think and you don't care what they care about. The only thing that matters is what you think about, what you care about and whether or not you get it. Jerry, back to you. We're role playing, right? Yeah. All right. Hi, my name is David. I'm calling from Sunlight Soul. What we're doing is calling people in your area that are interested in lowering their electric bill by as much as 60%. You say, great. What's it going to cost me? Right. Question, comment, or concern. Whatever it is, they interrupt you. There's two scenarios. Scenario number one, they interrupt you before you get them pre-qualified, before you know whether or not this person is worth speaking to or not. Scenario number two is they interrupt you after you've already pre-qualified them. Now again, you don't care what they want. You don't care what they care about. You don't care what they're doing. Your job is to control the conversation. So Jerry, you're going to interrupt me after the first paragraph with what's it going to cost? Me? So you'll see here, I should have put this in yellow. You interrupted me with a question, comment, or concern before I knew you were pre-qualified. I understand your concern about cost and I'm gladly going to answer it. Just so I don't waste your valuable time. Let me ask you three quick questions so I know that you're qualified. Do you own the property or do you rent it? Tell me. What type of home do you live in? Is it a single family residence, townhouse, condo, mobile home, manufactured home? What type of home do you have? Single family. Perfect. What would you say your average monthly electric bill is if you took a 12 month average, knowing in the summertime it may be higher than the winter? About $185. Okay. I have a specialist on the phone that can start the process for you and be happy more to answer your questions. Please stay on the line while I transfer and just do it. Now, your question was about cost. Did I answer your question about cost, Jerry? No, you didn't answer the question about the cost. Do you think maybe that was intentional? Yes. Did I get what I, did I say something that made sense that deflected what you wanted and turned it into what I wanted. Because what I wanted was to find out whether you owned your home, what type of home you lived in, and what your electric bill was. Did I care about your question? No. I alluded to your question and then spun it into what I wanted to talk about. Okay. I'll give you a real life example. All right. We've all heard politicians get interviewed by reporters. Think about it. When was the last time you heard a politician answer a question directly? Is the sky blue? I'm glad you asked the question about the sky's color, but let me tell you and talk about whatever the hell they want to talk about, right? You will never hear a politician answer the question directly. And the reason being is because it's irrelevant. All they want to do is take that opportunity to get whatever message they want out there. They'll allude to what you said and then spin it and talk about whatever it is they want to talk about. Okay. All right, so let's go back to our cyborg simulator here and our guide and scroll back down. We talked about the rules to succeed. We talked about the timeline. We talked about the color scheme. And we talked about the script. We talked about the rebuttal. Now let's talk about some rules. With rebuttals, if you explain what it is you're doing and why it is you're doing it, 95% of the time, 
people will give you the answer that you need. Now, you have four seconds to make an impression. Because the customer is judging you to see if you're worth speaking with. Again, everybody in the world hates telemarketers. So you got to give them a reason why they want to listen to you. So don't waste those first four seconds with, can you hear me? Don't ask how they're doing. Ignore the customer's questions until you know that they are pre-qualified. If they don't meet at least one pre-qualification, hang up. In other words, if they're the rent, if they say renter, hang up immediately. Don't continue. If they say they live in anything but a single family residence, hang up immediately. If their electric bill is less than $100 a month on average, hang up immediately. If they don't meet all three pre-qualifications, we cannot help them. You have a built-in rebuttal. This works for just about any scenario. I understand your concern about X, Y, Z, and I'm glad you brought that up. Honestly, don't want to give you any wrong information, which is exactly why we want you to meet with our specialist. He or she is going to provide you the proposal, explain all the options available to you, as well as the pros and cons of each option and answer any and all questions that you have. So you can make an intelligent choice as to whether solar is right for you and your family or not. Fair enough? Great. Now, the shorter abbreviated one is, that's a great question for one of our specialists. I don't want to provide you with any wrong information. Tell you what, let me transfer you to a specialist and they will answer any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. Please hold on and I will transfer you right now. Thank you. Moving on. Again, we have the NATO phonetic alphabet. You don't need it as an opening agent, but you will need to learn that as a closer. Now, remember, these people are judging you. If you don't pronounce the words correctly, you will lose your credibility. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Now, your question was about cost. Did I answer your question about cost, Jerry? No, you didn't answer the question about the cost. Do you think maybe that was intentional? Yes. Did I get what I, did I say something that made sense that deflected what you wanted and turned it into what I wanted? Because what I wanted was to find out whether you owned your home, what type of home you lived in, and what your electric bill was. Did I care about your question? No. I alluded to your question and then spun it into what I wanted to talk about. Thank you. Okay. I'll give you a real life example. All right. We've all heard politicians yes. get interviewed by reporters. Think about it. When was the last time you heard a politician answer a question directly? Is the sky blue? I'm glad you asked the question about the sky's color. But let me tell you and talk about a list together today of all the words that you're having troubles pronouncing. And what I did was phonetically spell them out for you, how they should be pronounced. Now, 
it's not universal phonetics that I'm using. but more or less using street phonetics, if you will. All right. So some of you still have trouble pronouncing the word solar. And it's pronounced solor, solar. All right. Sol, S-O-U-L, lor, L-O-R-E, solar. I know it's spelled differently, but this is how you pronounce it. Opportunity. Op or tune it T. Opportunity. A lot of you still have problems saying out of pocket. Some of you are still saying out of the pocket. If you say out of the pocket, you sound foolish to the person that is listening to you. Uh, it's not sounding professional. You do not sound like you know what you're talking about. Now, the whole idea is to sound as American as you possibly can, because the whole premise is that they think you're here in the United States, not in the Philippines, not in Pakistan, not in Jordan, not anywhere else in the world. They think you are and you're pretending to be from the United States. So you have to sound American. If you say out of the pocket, that is not American. It's out of pocket, not out of the pocket. Educate, edge, you, hate, like the girl's name, educate. Possibly, pos, im, li, possibly. Professional, bro, fesh, gun, no. Professional. Obligation, ob, li, geish, gun. Obligation. Proposal, bro, pose, al, like the guy's name. Proposal. Compliance. Comp, lie, like you're lying, ends, compliance. Patience, a, shents, patience. Affordable, af, ord, ub, o, affordable. Drastically, drast, tack, Lee, drastic lee. Eliminate, L, limb, in, eight, eliminate. Relatively, rel, lot, tib, lee, relatively. Incentives, incentives, incentives. Bankruptcies, bank, ruck. Seas, bankruptcies, foreclosures, 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 epidemic, 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 schedule, sketch, you all, like the guy's name, Al, schedule, all. virtual. Virtual, virtual. Phonetically, phonetically, like the guy's name, phonetically. Alternate, alter, 
net alternate program pro gram like the weight pro gram federal government federal like the guy's name federal government gov earn like a coffee urn meant government federal government composite comp pause it composite incorporate in corp or rate incorporate teleconference tele conference teleconference Ants like the bugs. I want you to practice these words because they're throughout your script. And if you mispronounce it the first time, you're going to pronounce mispronounce it the second time. And you're going to sound foolish. You're not going to sound as if you were pretending to be American, like you want them to believe. So learn how to pronounce these words. Learn five each day. Following day, learn five more. And then practice all 10. The next day, learn five more. Then practice all 15 and so on. It's going to help you. I know it sounds foolish, but it's only for your benefit, right? If you invest the time to do this, it's going to pay off major dividends later on. Jen, do you want to add something to that? No, no, Dave. Now, does anybody have any questions? Anybody at all? None, sir. All right. What I'm going to do is send you the video and send you this phonetic transcription. Please take the time to learn five words today and go through the script like we taught you how to do from the videos. All right, thank you everybody.